Well, it's Friday the 15th of March. We're back at North Kilworth Wharf for another weekend. It's going to finish up the partition walls, mocking up the bedroom, mocking up the kitchen, and having a look at the water pipes to set the fresh water uh, going. Come down to Midland Chandler's. It's a very nice little spot here. Just come over to get a fresh water tank gauge. I've got that. We'll take it back to the boat and we'll have a look. So yeah, it's about 11 a.m. Just been down to Midland Chandler's in Braunston to pick up a water level centre. It's £167 well spent. <laughs> oh, I tell you, these things are mental. Anyway, let's get back in the boat, get a coffee on, get some food. So let's have a look at what we get for £170. Definitely not paying for packaging. Okay. Okay, so fresh water tank gauge, bit of paper stapled on. What you do is most people just tear us out. Little tank, channel tank gauge. So what do we get? We get a little. Uh, Little gauge. Yeah, I'm sure you've all seen these. Okay. And there's the actual pressure gauge. Okay. <laughs> this isn't even a real instruction book. There's just some printed pages <laughs> stapled together. Oh my God. Yeah, this is exactly the same as I've seen online. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, ooh, a little sticky backed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 100 and, uh, 170 pounds. Fantastic. But, you know, it's that I use a stick to measure the water level. Well, that's everything unpacked. Uh, everything here is as I left it, which is a good sign always. Uh, so this weekend, I'm going to stick this wall in and then rough up the wardrobe and probably mark it all out with tape and then mock up the uh, water system. So I've kind of got used to having a partition wall. Uh, so yeah, so then I'm going to do a little bit of work down here, I think. But first of all, I've got to put the panels onto the frame and we're in that lovely clean pure blank plywood sheet look and then uh, stick that to the wall so yeah let's do some let's do some work Okay, so that's one of the panels secured. I've got to put a couple of screws in the middle yet, but uh, now I've got to line it up to where I'd like it and stick it to the wall. Cool, progress. So after doing multiple checks, like everywhere, everywhere that I can, it all, I think this is the straightest, the squarest I'm gonna get it. I mean, everything. Everything is square. I think it's as square as I'm going to get it. So, yeah. I've been checking it for about 20 minutes over and over again, making sure it's all square. I think it's as square as I'm going to get it, as straight as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this to the boat. Terrifying. More massive steps, or it feels like massive steps. I 
and a bit of a wonderful English spring. I don't know if you can see anything out there. I'll take the window out, it's a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, that's the wall secured in. Nice and sturdy, nice and stiff. Yeah, I could probably lean against all my weight against that now, and I'm not the smallest guy. So yeah, wicked. I'm going to uh, cut a piece of insulation, stick that to the board, and then stick the rest of uh, the other board to it. And that's a partition done. Yeah, moving on. five o'clock now that's a wall put in nice and strong nice and sturdy yeah hmm. well I hope I like it because that's there to stay it's not quite as clean around the edge this time but that's what trims for now I'm wondering if an inch and a half gap is enough for the window almost like buyer's remorse now that I've stuck it in I'm not sure It'll have to do, it'll have to do. Inside the bedroom, now that that wall is in, I'm gonna mark out the size of the bed and work out how much space I've got to play with for the water gear. Um, yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's mark this out. It's getting on for about half past seven. I've got Nigel coming over at eight o'clock for some chess. So this is just a rough mocking out of my bedroom idea. You've got the bed, which is the big shape uh, just here. You've got your little chest of drawers for small and mentionables, boxes and socks, stuff like that. You've got a wardrobe that will go all the way to the ceiling. That'll do hanging clothes, couple of shelves for t-shirts, shorts, stuff like that. And over here, I think I've got a cabinet. I'm not 100% sure on the size of that yet. Uh, but it's going to be something like that. I might might take it back six inches, might bring it out, sharper point, might round the corner, might round the corner of the bed. But I'm just trying to get an idea of the shape and size of the room, uh, what I've got available. I did have a look at some liners that are an inch deep, so they will fit quite happily around the window and give a little bit of space next to it. Put some curtains on, nobody will ever notice. Um, or, you know, some blinds or something, nobody will ever, nobody will care about that. Um, you know, just as always, I'm racking my brain about decisions I've made. So, you know, it's how you get on with, <laughs> well, how I get on with stuff. Uh, so yeah, so now I've mapped out the space, I'll see what the water components, what space the water components take up, whether I have to come under the step for some bits, whether I have to come under the chest of drawers for some bits. But for, uh, for now, I'm going to tidy up and clear up and get ready for chest with Nigel. But making progress. Uh, I want to move the bed back in here now and start working on the electrics cupboard, uh, you know, running before I can walk. But, um, oh, and it has occurred to me that I'm going to have to take these plugs off to get these cables out now because I've, I've built a wall in front of them. But I was always going to have to take the plugs off when the time comes because I've built the bathroom on top of them. So, yeah, so you live and you learn. Ooh, a rare bit of quiet. And the first look of spring. It's looking nice out there. So, Saturday morning, it's about half nine, I uh, just got a coffee on, and yeah, uh, walls in. Last night, uh, after chess with Nigel, I started pulling all the water gear out like an excited child at Christmas. So I've pulled most of it all out. I've also marked up kind of what I was thinking about for the bedroom. So there's a wardrobe all the way to the ceiling. It's a little chest of drawers for smaller mentionables, socks, boxes, stuff like that, uh, with the table on top. I might put a um, charging pad in the table, yeah. So you just put your phone down and charge it. Now I've marked out all the bed, where that would go. And this corner is still a bit of a mystery. I've just been spitballing ideas about a big cabinet, um, you know, big, you know, big storage with a shelf top and like a wall cabinet, you know, maybe for some books, maybe with some doors. Uh, with a little space on top for if you're outside on the front you can just throw bits in um so you know at, at this point i'm kind of 
a little bit regretting the placement of the light switch and the plug sockets. And maybe I should have thought this through a little bit more, even though I thought you threw loads that I thought I did. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, but this is what I've got now. This is what I've got to work with. I mean, there's nothing stopping me ripping it all out and, and you know, re removing stuff. I might do that yet. So we'll so see. it's getting off for lunchtime Saturday. So I just pulled out all the plumbing gear and the pump. Um, we'll have a quick look at all this stuff. Okay, so let's start with the accumulator. Uh, I have a five litre accumulator tank. This is how it comes. No strap, no fittings. It has a, I've gone out and bought a brass um, half inch BSP uh, to 22 mil compression fitting. Um, so yeah, I've got some inserts for compression fitting for the 22 mil pipe. So, and some PTFT tape for the threads. So yeah, hopefully that'll be all right. Here is the pump I've got. It's not the best pump. It's, uh, it's pretty much a baby. It's only 11 liters per minute. If, uh, if I have to upgrade this later, I will do. But I bought this kind of early on, not really knowing what I was looking at. It was what they had, it was in my price range um, at the Crick show last year. So it's quite interesting. It comes with an inline water filter with a uh, removable little mesh screen. Now, it's quite ingenious. The it's quite in okay, so it's quite ingenious. The fittings they have, they have these, um, let's get in the light, they have these clever little quick lock mechanisms that fit in to the pump itself so it just slides out that goes in the hole your lock is shut that's quite good now that comes with it comes with half inch barbed uh, connectors so you just plug them into the pump and lock it shut and into the filter and lock it shut. Now that's all well and good if you're using half inch pipe. Now I'm using quick fit. So I had to go online and buy these, uh, I think it's half inch, quarter inch, not 100% sure at this point, uh, but it's um, threaded compression fit, uh, lock fit. So you just remove those Place those with those. Get in there. There we go. And then you can add your flexi pipe, and then you can add your flexi pipe to the pump. Now, looking on online, they say not to use PTFE tape. Um, just lock that down. Uh, with adjustable spanners so yeah <clears throat> now when I got the boat it had this one inch BSP which now I found out that they measure the interior diameter so it's a one inch BSP after not being able to find anything to fit this for, age for ages came with a nice brass elbow with 22 mil compression it also had a 22 mil lock valve um, even though it, it's not full bore 22 it's middle wing at uh, 15 has a full bore ball bearing lock valve so I figured I'd use those instead of buying more the inline sensor has 15 mil quick fit or something similar one thing to show you is that the box has a handy diagram of how to set up your water system. You have your fill vent, a filter, a pump, a city inlet pressure regulator, which I don't know, an accumulator tank, a one-way valve to the hot water system, and the cold water runs all the way around your system, and the hot water comes from that through the system. Um, yeah, so what I'm missing at this point is the calorifier. A sink, a sink, a shower, and a toilet added in there. So yeah, that's about two thousand pounds. 
<laughs> so yeah, might be a little bit of time. But a uh, handy little diagram, just in case you're not sure what you're doing. Uh, the inline water level sensor as well comes with a gauge, has some wiring, so I'm going to cut some small wires uh, for that and put some connectors on them. And it comes with this, just to tell you how to wire it. So yeah, that's uh, fairly straightforward. <coughs> and the toy box. Okay. So in here, I think I've got everything I need uh, for the run. I've got six 15 mil elbow uh, T-junctions. That's for the hot and the cold water taps, toilet, shower. I've got three elbows. That's for the two for the bottom end and one for the final hot water feed up to the sink. I've got one 22 mil to 15 mil uh, adapter for the coming off the uh, isolator cut off onto the water level sensor. I've got a 15 through to a 22 for the accumulator. I've got flexi pipe for the water pump. I've got some in error. I've got some with 50 mil both ends. Maybe I'll use them for something else. I've got 50 super seal 15 mil inserts. Uh, these are for the compression fittings and the elbows and the T's. I've got 10 super seal 22 mil inserts these are for compression fittings inside the 22 mil quick fit and i've got 10 uh, compression seal inserts for the compression fittings such as this so looking online all being well this should all work but not doing any plumbing before hopefully this will uh, this will all be good i've also got an isolator valve for the back end of the the circuit so i can isolate anything uh, from the taps down and then with this I'll isolate anything from the tank through to this isolator Then there's a bucket full of these dovetail connecting clips Which connect together Which might be a little bit close I think but uh, maybe if you do uh, But they've all got a screw hole in the middle each so maybe if you do space for three And maybe if you get inventive with your T's and elbows You could get away with something you know, maybe if it's like that, you could get away with it being so tight. But who knows? We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so that's everything I've got at this point. I might need one or two other bits. I went for John Guest Speed Fit because it's available everywhere from Wix, B and Q, Screwfix, Tool Station, any of the smaller shops. Uh, all, all carry all the channelers. All carry uh, Speed Fit. So uh, that seemed like the best best way to go, and it's you know we're we're a couple of years into it being used on boats now, so it's, at this point it's pretty much foolproof. <clears throat> so yeah, hopefully I've got everything. I still need to get a ten amp fuse for the water pump, and I need to make a way of housing the accumulator tank. Apart from that, I think we've got everything we need. So yeah, I'm going to start mocking up some components. Uh, now that I've marked out the space of the wardrobe and the chest of drawers, there is a step going as well in front of the door, so we might utilise some of that space if we have to. So yeah, this reminds me in my head, this is kind of like Apollo 13 when they're trying to put all the components together without making the electronics trip off. So let's see if we can get everything in this space. So it's about half past two. Um, I've got a, a little bit, it feels like I've done nothing compared to last weekend. But I've come in from the water tank, uh, all the way under this mess, through to a stock lever, which I broke the lever. So I'm either replacing that or getting a new lever if you can. Through the reduction corner, through the um, water level sensor, through some flexi hose, to the water pump, uh, to the bit where the accumulator is. Now I'm just wondering whether to lay the accumulator flat like this on its back or to stand it up against the wall. Like that. Um, either way I'm losing some space out of the drawers but I'm happy either way 
Or I'll put it like that all the way at the end. I'll make it so you just have to pull a little bit of a panel off. I can, you know, attach that with magnets or something. Uh, maybe, you know, extend that pipe at the back and have and then have all the uh, water running the back wall. Could do that, then you lose like the space of one drawer. So you still get to keep three drawers, maybe, you know, two deep drawers, three drawers. So yeah, a um, couple of little bits left to get with this, um, but we can continue on. Also to have a strap, so I've got to work out a way to keep this secure. So half four now. All of this lot is pretty much in place. I made my own straps out of the bubble wrap, wrapped it over the wood and stuck it down. It isn't pretty, but it works. Thank you, Dad. Uh, and we'll hide it and make it pretty. Thank you, Mum. So now I'm going to continue on from here, which is my outlet shut off, which I agree is probably going to be a nightmare to get to. So I'll have that angle towards me inside the cabinet. Uh, continuing the run now of the pipe and the measure height of these mark a line and just put them in every say 25 30 centimeters something like that and we'll have a nice pipe going down the wall and then we'll drill through this wall here so yeah it's taken all day it's been a very slack day but yeah let's get on with it so one pass through and that's its resting state so that's definitely done something so let's give it a few more passes. And see so it occurred to me while editing the video that I don't have an explanation of what I'm doing here. Uh, I saw a Nogan Wales video where they've got a thick bit of wood with a hole just the same size as the pipe. And they pull the pipe through the hole uh, to try and straighten the pipe out. And it seemed to work in their video. So I thought what well, a great opportunity to try it out. So here's me trying it out. Well, the outer ring has had five passes through the tiny hole. And the little bit in the middle I've just cut for tests and fittings. So yeah, it's definitely done something, but it's nothing really to phone home about. It's definitely, you know, it's taken some of the stress out of, you know, trying to straighten it out. I mean, the stress in the pipe of trying to straighten it out. It's, you know, it's going to go straight a little easier. So yeah, it's done something, at least. Oh, as good a place as any for a catch-up. It's about half past five, 20 past five. I've just uh, put the clips in and just laid a little bit of test pipe just because I want to mark out the hole for where the pipe's going to run up to. Now, of course, there's massive tension in the pipe because it's super coiled. So it, it really wants to be back in the spring. So I'm just going to let that sit for a little bit and uh, then I'll mark out the hole, then drill, uh, drill through. And uh, yeah, and then we'll start putting the longer bits of pipe through and yeah, start locking this all in. Cool. So in the bedroom, apart from a 10 amp fuse, that's the water done. Apart from, you know, testing it and replacing the valve or the handle if I can. Um, but yeah, we'll build some furniture over the top of this. This will be housed. This will have a false bottom so you can get to everything and this will have it so you can get to it from the front if you need to. Uh, yeah, fun, fun and games. With the pipe drill through the hole in the wall and we reconnect down here. And then now the job is continuing on clamping it to the wall, drilling into the bathroom. I'm not going to add on the kitchen or the bathroom outlets just yet. I'm not 100% sure where I want them, so I'm not going to limit to myself to where I put the two junctions now. Um, but I will cut pipe and lay it all the way to the end of the boat and probably cut the elbows on uh, for the end to come across for the chlorifier. And then I might run back down with the hot water uh, afterwards. Um, just to put the pipes in place. But yeah, fun afternoon. It's taken the entire day just to get the uh, bedroom done. A lot of guesswork. Um, we'll see how them straps go uh, when, you know, I mean, I might end up buying some proper stainless steel spring straps, but as far as I can tell, they should be fine. There's plastic and metal. It's all interwoven. They're, they're tough. They don't stretch. They're screwed down underneath the bits of wood. They shouldn't have any give. Uh, you know, you know, the tiniest little bit for vibration, which is kind of what you want a bit. But you know, anywhere that you can get some vibration out that isn't the pipes is good. So, but yeah, like I said, it's not the cleanest I've ever seen. It's, I'm annoyed about that handle breaking. That's really annoying. I don't know if you could just buy them or if I'm going to have to replace the entire valve. Or if I'm just going to, like, I don't know, just use a spanner on it or something. If, it's, if I ever want to turn it off. Because it's in now, it'll do. Hmm. 
thinking of changing the name of channel to good enough for me. <laughs> oh, all the tiny compromises you make. Yeah, that's it and that'll do. Um, if you need to adjust the accumulator, you can get to it at the front there. It's just like a bar car or a bike tire. Bar. It's just like a car or a bike tire. It's just got a valve. It's a little, a little bit of nitrogen out until it stops pulsing. If you have any questions, watch the Journey with Johnny videos from about four years ago. Uh, but yeah, happy with all of that. I might I might raise the pump up and put it on some, some cushioning as well. I mean, it has the rubber feet already, but yeah, I might do it with a sort of can to um, reduce the vibration. That's another reason to box it out. I might line the box with, with insulation as well, just to, to block out the sound. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Start pinning the, the hose to the rest of the wall all the way down the boat or start building some furniture in here. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So about quarter to seven now, running out of clips. I'm gonna try and get this at least into the bathroom, I think. So I'm gonna take some of the clips off that I've put on and just stretch this all the way to the bathroom and coil it up in there. It means moving the fire really, really heavy and moving some of the gear in the corner there. Uh, but I think it'll be worth it. Well, <clears throat> about half eight Sunday morning. One thing I've noticed, the onset of spring, blossom. <laughs> you completely forget that the roof's gonna get completely covered in stuff. Oh well. Try and paint this this year. It's getting a bit grubby. So Sunday morning, uh, about half past ten, I've just taken a drive out to Screwfix in Lutterworth to pick up a replacement uh, stop valve. Now I've had to go for the Het 2O system as opposed to the John G Speed Fit, uh, and then need some keys to undo it just in case. And then I've got a bag of a hundred more clips, so that should do. A little bit so it means we can get on today i'm going to replace that valve out so it's about half 12 i've managed to change out the uh, stop valve and i've cleaned up all the wiring i've put it all in conduit so that's all nice and tidy now it does ask for a 10 amp inline fuse down here um the whole pump is run through a 10 amp breaker on the 12 12 volt circuit board but i will put a 10 amp fuse in in line and i might put a switch in a lot of people seem to put switches in uh, for the water pump down by the water pump. So I'll put a secondary switch off the breaker as well uh, down here, just hidden somewhere inside the wardrobe. Uh, this thing is nice and sturdy. It's got no give in it. It's, it's yeah, it's nice and sturdy. It doesn't look pretty, but it works. Um, yeah, the rest of the piping seems okay. There's a service valve just here. If ever I need to turn the circuit off and, and work on these bits while there's water in the lines, and there's your main shut off to uh, turn the water off for winterizing and drain some of the system. Now, for me, I want, I'd want i like a non-return valve, like here, to stop pressure on the water pump, on backflow pressure. But I don't know. I've never done anything like this before. All of the plumbing diagrams I've seen don't mention a non-return valve down here. The only place they mention a non-return valve is at the chlorifier, the cold water feed into the chlorifier. So, yeah, but I mean, for my money, I'd like, I, you know, just to be safe, but I don't know if that's just something else that's going to go wrong. I don't know if it's something, you know, it's going to clog up the system. Um, I don't know if, it, it, if the pump's designed for back pressure like that. So, I mean, but all the wiring on the box, all the, the piping on the box diagram doesn't have a stop return valve next to the accumulator, so I'm assuming it can handle the pressure and pump through the pressure, but you know, we'll find out. When it comes time to test all this, we'll see if any of it leaks, uh, if it's got to all be redone. I've never done any of this before, so who knows whether I've done it right or not. But it's all as tight as I can get it. I've screwed down all of the speed fit. I've pushed in as hard as I can, used all my body weight to push in the, the, the HEP 2.0. Uh, and that's, you know, seems pretty firm. The handle on the return valve is good. It's pretty nice. I could tilt that upwards and have it at an angle, but that I'll be able to get through to the side of the wardrobe and we'll put a false bottom in to hide all of this that we can access if we need to. 
Uh, same as this, we'll have three drawers above that. And if we ever need to get to any of it, we can just pull the drawers out and get in there. So it's all accessible. And I'll keep some spares, you know, bits and pieces that I pick up along the way uh, down here, fuses and whatnot. Um, yeah, okay, so that's done for for all intents and purposes for now, apart from a fuse and possibly a switch. But for now, we can we can call that done. Okay, so on to the rest of the boat or on to building furniture. So, about half one, just had some lunch, not really done much else. This whole mess is making me crazy. So I think I'm going to push everything to this side and continue on with the pipe running. And bring some uh, pipe back for hot water up to the kitchen sink. I think I'm going to have to dismantle this. Uh, the first thing I built, this little kitchen unit that I had next to my bed forever. It's massive, it's just in the way. Um, and it's time to find somewhere else for the fridge to live, I think. Uh, so I'm going to take this apart and put the hearth in place. Or at least, you know, the rough approximation of the hearth. Um, maybe get the fire out of the way. Because that's, you know, massive, heavy in the way. So at least then, you know, it, 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 get it out of the way. So I might just, so I think I'm going to clear all of this mess up. And bring everything across and continue on the piping, make it look pretty. And just uh, out of curiosity, I did go down some of the edges with a multi-tool. They weren't super clean, but they seem to have taken the bulge out. So it's about half two, I've just got that run finished. I'm just gonna put a uh, hot water pipe in for the all the way back up to the kitchen sink and an elbow to bring it up the wall. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, been pretty good so far. Okay, so 20 to four, and that's the living room uh, plumbing done got a hot and a cold. I've got a cold coming from the water tank underneath all the way and I've got hot coming back for the kitchen sink. And I've got both hot and cold coming up and I will uh, do more to them when the time is right. So, nice and crisp and tidy. Everything's clipped in, nothing can move. So yeah, all really sweet. Yeah, happy with that. Okay, so now with all the pipe laid in, I can get on with the hearth, which is what was I wanted to do before I started the hearth down here, because I figured if I put the hearth in, I'm never getting any pipes through the wall. Uh, so the hearth board, I've cut out a thing so that it can just slot slide in and over, and then it's cut through the holes in the back wall. Just like that so we can slot the half wall back in if we need to, uh, when we need to, to take it all out without doing any major damage and set the pipes out. So that's quite good. Uh, that was only really an issue after I had put the pipe through the first wall and went, oh, now I can't get the half wall off. So pulled all the pipe back out, cut it all out with the jigsaw, but that's now sorted. I'm really happy with this run. It's really clean. So yeah. Um, it'd be a shame to box that in. But yeah, those are fun. So it's about 20 past four. I've just pulled the fire into a place kind of where I like it. How big this room is. I kind of like it there, it's, you know, um, that's not the size of the hearth. I'm wondering about the height, so let me know what you think. But what I plan to do is have it coming off the wall where it is, round this edge over and follow all the way, all the way, all the way to the edge there and have supports under the feet as they are now to hold the weight. And then I'll make drawers underneath for fire lighting and cleaning equipment. And we'll put a metal strip around the edge uh, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm just wondering if it's too high. I wonder if it's the good height. I actually quite like the height at a distance. Um, but, you know, it's one of them things that, you know, you might build it and decide it's it's just two inches too high or an inch too high or something stupid like that. So 
But yeah, last look at the pipes before I put the kitchen back. It all looks so crisp and clean. It's a little bit dicky through the door, but through the wall. But all that looks fantastic. So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Ooh, and it's magic hour. Can't miss magic hour for filming. Lovely and quiet here at North Kilworth Wharf. Wow, it's about half past six. Uh, it's been a fun weekend of work. Doesn't feel like I've got a lot done, like dramatically like I did last week. But we've got a bit done. Uh, all the piping in, the, in here is done, all the water house assembly is done in the bedroom. Yeah, just uh, cleared out the bathroom, pulled out all the uh, spares of wood I've got off cuts. Some call it scraps, but to me it's a bonus pile. I've still got the three big boards. Uh, one of these will go and make the wardrobe, one will make the shower, and one I think I may chop up and replace this upper wall in the bathroom here. Bathroom I've cleared out a little bit. I've got cable for the toilet, lights, um, ceiling vent. I've got 1.5 mil that I put in for the water pump. I'm probably going to replace that with 3 mil, but I'll leave that 1.5 in case I want to put a shaver port in. Something like that, toothbrush charger. Pipe comes through the wall, and I haven't done any more in here. It gives me something to do next time, just tapping on the tees for the shower and the sink and the toilet on the cold water. Then the pipes will continue through. Um, I'm probably going to build the bedroom before I do that so I can move the bed and have the pipes running down here and then start on the electrics cupboard as well. So maybe I'll use one of those sheets on the electrics cupboard. But uh, yeah, sun's going down, the birds are singing, it's playing my song. Still got a bathroom to build as well. I mean, since doing the door, I've not been back in here. So that'll require a full door build um, and proper placement and some way to lock it. I'm working out a frame and there's a whole bunch to do in here. So there's still loads to do. So, yeah. But yeah, the boat's looking good. It's nice and clean and empty. This is more along the feeling of what it's going to look like when it's done until I start filling it with knickknacks. Uh, yeah. Partition wall bedroom, um, so marked out on the floor of the bed. Chest of drawers with a table behind the bed. Big wardrobe. With the front framing, you can see more of what I'm going for with the wardrobe. Then this space, I've still got no idea. I'm probably going to shrink it by you know at least a third of its size. Because uh, that, that corner is pretty close. So it'll probably go to the other side of the plug socket. And that plug socket will be used for like vacuuming and stuff like that. Charging Game Boys, charging my VR headset. Uh, but yeah, tall cabinet, taller cabinet, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, so I've uh, disconnected the power, disconnected the gas. Last thing to do is disconnect the battery and then take the hour and a half, hour and 40 minute drive home. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I should be back in a fortnight for Easter uh, and we'll get on with some more of the bits and pieces then. But yeah, thanks very much everybody. I hope you're having fun out in the world. I'll catch you in the next one.